Supportive does not mean that they're the yes people. They're the ones who are actually honest, who are the ones who are going to mm. give you the feedback that you actually need, want, and desire to support your growth. Hi, I'm Jennifer Britton, and welcome to the Coaching Mini Podcast. I've been on a mission for the last 20 years to expand the coaching conversation to many. Along with my co-host, Ivana Valley, we're going to be exploring coaching as it relates to conversations, connection, and change in both personal and professional settings. Coaching Many is about creating empowering and thought-provoking spaces for conversation which strengthen relationships and enhance results. Throughout the Coaching Many podcast, we'll share tools, practices, and approaches to support you in your conversations, one dialogue at a time. Hey, Ivana, welcome back. I'm so looking forward to our conversation today where we're going to look at catalyzing and cultivating the six layers of connection. This is something that I first uh, enshrined in reconnecting workspaces as mm -hmm. a model. It's known as the six layers of connection. And these, I like to assert, are really the magic, sort of the secret sauce of group and team coaches in taking a good conversation to great. I know you've been excited in looking at this. You tripped over my my short on this from October of last year. What do you want the listeners to know up front about the six layers of connection? Yeah, you know, I think what I love about the six layers of connection is like, it's kind of like I use the metaphor of a camera lens. And so it allows all of us to really use different lens to actually fully accomplish what we're all wanting, which is connection, because we know this, we're hardwired for connection. And so from a, a group or team coach or coaching many, or whether you're at the kitchen table or in a conference room, it is we really do want to have that, that, that relationship. And so like, how do we foster that? And, and this builds off of the trust, safety and connection. I'll let you speak more to that. But I think these pieces from a design standpoint, from an execution standpoint are fundamental. And for me personally, in terms of the work that I do, these lend to then supporting the people I work with to like, how do we, how do we take what we're doing here, the container that we've created here, and how do we then replicate that and model that and put that into effect in our own lives? Yes. Because it's fundamental that we as people have strong connections and relationships that support us to fulfill our goals whether it be the goals that come out of this program that we're taking in our group coaching program or beyond. And mm. so I think it's very, very fundamental that we actually integrate these layers, but to even look at it beyond. And I know we're going to look at each of these. So mm. let's start. But I think it's fundamental. Yeah. Well, let's let's let our listeners know, you know, so there, if you imagine the triad of trust, safety and connection, the triad um, really gets expanded. So there's these six mm. layers that we can be looking at, starting at the top with how are we connecting people to the topic? And so we're going to go through each one of these one at a time. And as you're listening, I would really encourage you to think about a group that you're working with or a team, because we want to be spotlighting. We want to be, you know, magnifying or pointing to each of these. And as you'll hear, the six layers are things that we want to practically do, as, as Ivana said, in design, and we want to have conversations around it to deepen them. So the first one is connecting people to the topic. And that, of course, may be done through your pre-work, your pre-calls, even as people come into the room, what's important about today's focus around X? And what is different than in a one-on-one -on -one conversation, I think it's important to put this up front, is usually as a group, We've agreed the week before or the conversational touch point before where we're going to go. We're setting people up for success. That's a term I coined a decade ago. We're setting people up for success in terms of getting them back in the room, thinking about this topic, uh, maybe doing some work, connecting it with their one page plan. So what's one of the favorite things you like to do in connecting people with the topic, Ivana? Well, I think before I share that, I think it's also really fundamental to share, like, especially in group conversations is what's important or the connection to the connection to the topic is very individual. So where people are coming into the conversation, allowing them to like articulate that for themselves. And as the coach, being okay that everyone has a different connection to the topic. 
I think that's really key because it's it's important that I, as a participant, you know, what's important to me about this is going to be different than Mary versus Joanne versus whoever it is. Mm-hmm. And so I think that that is that is fundamental. What and you're saying, what are one of the things that I do to help connect people to the topic? Well, you know, I think it's something that you you model beautifully is using visuals, even using reflection prompts. This is part of the design we're talking about, but how are you bringing people into the conversation both at a session level, but also as it relates to the topic is is key. So I do different tools. It could be a meditation just to, you know, help people ground, especially if it's a highly vulnerable conversation, like the topic is, is really helping people to kind of leave what's behind them. And so they can show up for what, where they are and be present to what, what wants to be explored. Nice. So invitation for you as a listener to think about what are you doing to connect people with the topic during the calls, pre-call. I would say in a team coaching, it's just as important, right? And we we also want to cultivate within the collective, what are the individual perspectives and priorities in, within the team mm-hmm. around the topic that you're looking at? Because we may think, oh, it's important to all of us. Mm, probably not. So are we really making that explicit? So let's move to area two, which I think naturally coaches automatically think, well, connection, of course, that's connecting me with the client. And typically in a group coaching, you know, the coach may be seen as the hub of the wheel. They're the person who brings people together, yet they are not the central point of the entire group coaching process. In a team coaching experience, we're stepping into the team system and we're fading in and we're fading out. But we need to make sure that the connection is there that people have actually gotten to know us and have said yes i'm i'm like giving you permission coach to like Mm. take me somewhere we have to have that level of trust so cultivating this experience and this connection with our clients starts way before we step into the room and you know pre-calls have always been a best practice right in effective group coaching that was one of the first ones that popped out in the research as Mm -hmm. really critical for success. And so what do you like to do in terms of pre-connecting with people? Yeah. Well, in my view, I think this conversation often will start, I set up connection calls or compatibility calls. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, this this is even before we get into a group conversation. It's like establishing that credibility, that trust, that safety as the coach even before the point of purchase. Because even if you think about like people need multiple touch points. And so I want to make sure that the right people are coming into my programs as much as they know what to expect from our program. So it's kind of like what coaching is, what coaching isn't, right? There's that education piece and and it's part of the marketing material, but, but there's no better way to do it than through connection, through a video call or however you do it to really ensure that that is there because to me, in my view, it's kind of like a prerequisite in order for then that connection with the group to happen. If there isn't that strong connection and trust with me as the coach, then it's going to be much more challenging to take to to go to the next, you know, layer or number three of the of the layers of connection. That's just my own personal view on it. Yeah, I would assert that, you know, a survey can only say so much. So what are we doing to really help to to build that conversational yeah. relationship? Because there's a lot of things that we pick up that is beyond what is spoken, right? Yeah. 60% of the conversation is body language. I want to get your I want to get your ear on something because, you know, I think it works in group coaching to have those connection calls or those pre-calls. Mm-hmm. What is the dynamic? What is it of with teens? Like I would think mm. that, that like that brings a little so, you bit know, of th- this is an interesting conversation. This is often the one in a room where it's like, oh, would you really do it from an ethical standpoint? Can you have a pre-call with yeah. everyone? I always have, you know, especially with the teams that I work with, which are typically like not co-located. So they are in geographically different mm. positions. Now I make it very clear though. My work is to in support of the entire team and a pre-call with an individual team member is to get to know them. Who are you? What do you do? What is your role? What are your priorities? How do you link into everyone else on the team? 
the intent of that pre-call is not to learn about the team history. It's to really learn about the individual within the team context. Mm. So great ask, because I think there's been a lot of debate over the years. Do you do it? But where we are now in 2024, it's yeah. part of what the, is standard practice as a team coach. And you've just got to make it really clear what is the intent and what is the purpose of these conversations. Beautiful, beautiful. Good. Well, let's keep moving. We could yeah. spend, we could really do an hour on this, but we want to keep this to our usual 30 minutes. So layer three is connecting individual group or team members with each other because the power of coaching many is in the peer process. Absolutely. I'll say that again. You know, we know from research over the years that really the power of the peer process is much stronger than a leader with his or her team. Same thing with a coach. Right. If you really want to affect change, you get the team to change it. You get the group to change it. Don't try to like push the boulder. That's yeah. not going to happen. So let's talk a little bit about peers. What are you noticing? What are you hearing? What are you seeing? What do you do, Ravana, with peer to cultivate the peer layer of connection? Well, I think as just to reiterate what you said, it's absolutely fundamental. I do some work with organizations and they're not necessarily, you know, reporting into the same person, but they're peers. And mm -hmm. I see there to be a lot of camaraderie, a lot of accountability that comes from that. So one of the things that I really, what that I do is I, in my design, I intentionally create the space for peer, like whether it be in the coaching conversation. And even sometimes I, I set up peer accountability even with the work that in both types of work that I do, even with the development of English skills, like it happens mm -hmm. beyond this one and one and a half hours. And so mm -hmm. the accountability of peers amongst them, as well as as a group, you know, so one of the things that I learned from you is like, how do we keep this conversation going as a group, but mm -hmm. also how do we allow it beyond the group to support individual growth and individual development? Yeah. yeah. So invite, what are you doing to activate the relational lens of coaching others and the peer process, which takes us then to layer four, which is the layer of connecting people in with the content. And that helps us think about workplace preferences, learning styles. Again, we all see the world in different ways. We all want to interrelate in different ways. So what are you doing to connect people with content? Not everyone wants to sit down and watch a TED Talk or a video. They might want to read a book or maybe they don't want to read a book. They want to grab a mm -hmm. set of cards because they want to touch something. They want to be kinesthetically inclined. So I think this whole layer of connecting people in a group and team coaching process with content, absolutely critical. And what do you do? Is there a favorite that you have, Ivana, with, with the content lens? Well, I I do allow for a variety of approaches to content in the pre-work, again, keeping in mind the learning style. So for those who want to read, there might be a short article on the context of what we might be doing, or it could be a TED Talk. You know, mm. so, the, so I think a big thing that I am very intentional on is really integrating the various learning styles, both in the pre-work, but really allowing how we approach the content and the conversation, I'm very sensitive to, again, everyone wants something different from this topic. So in the, in the connection of topic is I really allow the space for people to really get clear and honor where they, what, what is important to this topic and the content as it relates to them. And we even see this in the practicum a lot in our practicum program. Like a coach is coming practicing the integration of all these best practices and these skills that we've taught in the essentials. And at the same time, they're still holding on to what they think is best for the group or even mm -hmm. the team. And oftentimes the feedback is you got to leave your ego. You have to leave what you think is best for the team. Cause that's, again, that's a nuance out of that facilitation training. We're not the expert, mm -hmm. you know, and oftentimes there is content. I'm not the expert of all this content and so who am I to say where we have to go with it? Yeah. So it's very much a dynamic and individual process. But as the container holder, we have to be very mindful of that so people can get what they want to get. And a lot of ego does have to be checked in. Yeah, check it at the door, number one. 
You know, it's interesting. And some some coaches might be listening saying, but wait, why is the word content in, in coaching? Mm-hmm. Like those don't go together. But if you look at the ICF competencies, you will actually see that a team coach does have provision to bring in content. I always like to use the example, you know, you're coaching a team around difficult conversations. That team needs to have a shared mental model, i.e. they need to have content. They need to understand what causes conflict? What What is my reaction to conflict? You know, what are the ways we can systematically move the needle so that we have a shared process? So content not a does not have really a role in the one-on-one coaching conversation, but it definitely has a role in the group and team coaching conversation zone. And in fact, I, I think back to some conversations I had yesterday with our, our students and a couple of them said, well, what do I do about content needs? Well, this is where micro learning comes in, you know, mm-hmm. have a short video on this so that when people come back, they've watched that, they've absorbed the content, they've satiated that need for learning. And now they can think about application and integration and how I want to make this mine. That second part is the coaching conversation. And we can mm-hmm. keep it different. We can keep it crisp. Yeah, I have a philosophy, Jen, and I'm going to I'm going to put it in here. I won't sleep tonight if I don't say this. So I think it is very important and you suggested it, but I think I want to make it a bit more forthright is this whole concept of content and where is it in the learning? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. It's part of the group and team coaching container, but it is not in the actual session. Like you said earlier, a few minutes ago, it's like, you know, that takeaway, that integration that reinforcement, whatever it means for them. So, you know, like you said, the competence say there's space for content, but in a group and team coaching, it's where is it in the conversation of coaching? Because if you're bringing content that they have not had any exposure to and starting to talk concepts and principles, then you're actually moving away from the container for people to explore these things Mm -hmm. as it relates to the team's goals or roles or even in group coaching. So I just wanted to share that and because I wouldn't sleep tonight if I didn't. <laughs> and I think it's an important one and it gets it trips people up and then it's like very murky and people yeah. are like, well, what are we doing here? And so even if you flag a call, a training call versus a coaching call, yeah. bring the content in if you want to do it live into a training session, but tra- training is not coaching. So our fifth area, we're going to keep moving, which is the platform. How are you connecting people with the platform? Mm -hmm. And this is really talking about the five engagement levers that I started sharing during the pandemic. So are we using polls? Are you using chat? Are you using breakouts? Are you really getting people connected in with the platform? And even in 2024, we continue to see platforms that are more supportive of collaborative conversations versus others that are splintering. We also, and it's interesting, Friday of last week, several of the advanced group coaches that I was talking with, actually, one of them said who had been a real advocate for a certain type of, won't name the company, but I will say they really were like, oh, we need to do this with whiteboards, da 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 make it very complex. And they came to the call is that actually I've like had to retract my stance on it because the technology was getting in the way. So keep Mm. it simple, right? The whole premise of effective virtual conversations is we want to bring people together for that trust, safety, and connection. And if people are frustrated, if they're confused, if they don't know how to do something, they cannot lean into the conversation. So what are you doing to really activate the five engagement levers so that people can connect in? It's not always verbally Some people love the chat. Some people love to use annotation. If you're not familiar with these, I would encourage you strongly head on over to the Effective Virtual Conversations playlist at our Effective Group Coaching. EVC, Effective Virtual Conversations, came out in 2017 when my publishing world didn't, they weren't interested. But you know what? We were interested. And I still think on my tombstone, that will be one of my greatest marks, <laughs> the support that I gave to the world, you know, at the beginning of the pandemic, where people are trying mm. to figure this stuff out. Yes, there are experts in it, but my my assertion is they probably are not experts in virtual conversations. Yeah. Virtual conversations have to be grounded in trust, safety, and connection. And many people have never mastered that art, even in the last four years. Yeah. And I want to add, I think a big part of the engagement leaders, it was the first course I took with you. 
Yeah. What was through Most the pandemic. Most people mapping through that program. Yeah. And it was a, a game changer. It was a mm-hmm. game changer. But it's also going back to the intentionality. Like if you're just using technology for the sake of technology, then you've missed the boat. This yeah. is not like you're not using engagement levers to say, oh, I did polls. I did this. I did that. No. like it's And it's actually not about this is going back to that range and that growth. Like mm-hmm. whether you are in virtual conversations, whether you're in person, I'm even doing an Italian language class right now in Italy, and we're playing games of polls on the phone of to course. get that engagement. Why? Because it's going to anchor that, you know, that competitive spirit, that mm-hmm. learning So you really have to get clear on what is the intentionality of what you're doing. And if that means you have to grow your edge, you have to grow your competency in technology, Mm -hmm. then guess what? We've got a program for you, right? We've got Mm -hmm. a program for you or go to those videos. But it is fundamental because otherwise, it also is, I think it's also a differentiator. When you're actually good with these engagement levers, you start getting recognized for that because people want to stay engaged. Yes. You know, the, like a conversation. I, we've done practicums. It's been part of my growth. I was doing group coaching before I took your program and it was very flat yeah. and I was losing people. So it's of service yeah. to the participants and it's of service to your own skill and competency to stay, you know, ahead of it. And you are a creative tool masters. And there's so many tools out there, crosswords, like you continue to amaze me. So there's no (laughs) shortage of supply. But as you know, this is where our business skills, as much as our coaching skills are fundamental. Absolutely. And your platform choice, this may be something that you need to negotiate around because I would assert there are virtual platforms that really are not suitable for a a, a dialogue, right? Dialogue mm-hmm. comes from the Dia words, Dia and Logos. It is about a conversation between, not at. And so we really need to have everyone at the same level with the same access to the tools. So in interest of time, we're going to move to the final layer, which is the layer of context. Or as I like to say at the beginning of the pandemic, what's outside your window, right? What is mm-hmm. outside your window? What's happening around you? If you're doing virtual or hybrid, you're not seeing everyone's world. Everyone is in a different different space. And so it is really important that you're connecting people in with their context. It's no surprise that systemic coaching approaches have become so popular in a world of mm-hmm. ongoing change. <clears throat> and it, they've always been popular, right? Like I did ORSC training in 20, 2005. Mm-hmm. It was like, you know, 20 years ago. And so what are you doing to really help people? look at their context, look at the larger ecosystem of which they are a part of. What would you like to say on this? Because I think this is a big area that you focus on in your work as a coach, Ivana. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think first, I think it's fundamental that as a container, as a group coach or team coach, like we're we're kind of like modeling it, demoing it, you know, in all the things that we've discussed up until now. And in the work that I do is kind of like taking that to the next level, you know, mm-hmm. and I think it was Jim Rohn who said, like, you are, you know, the the five people that are closest in your community. Do you know what I mean? I, I butchered the quote a little bit, but it's that essence of like, you are the community that you have surrounded by you. So if I see that in a group coaching context, like part of what I was saying earlier, like you want the right people in your program, the right readiness, all that. But then you also, because we're all up to and have challenges and goals. And especially like a big part of our work is around like that disruption of change. You know, Mm. who, who is your community? Who are the people that you can lean on? You know, I do a great exercise. It's like that relationship mapping. Mm. This isn't like an inquiry, like allow yourself to draw the map, whether it be five, seven, and see the proximity to people who are closest to you, whether it be in terms of interaction or not, but are these people actually supporting you or are they draining you? Yeah. You know, and what what changes? What are the gaps? What are those things that you can actually do to support you moving in having the correct, the support of people around you? And just with an asterisk behind that, supportive does not mean that they're the yes people. They're the ones who are actually honest, who are the ones who are going to mm. give you the feedback that you actually need, want, and desire to support your growth. You know, and that's a big part of the work when people are going 
I, I remember in with with the group I was working with in Italy, like we transformed relationships with their spouses who spoke English. They started speaking English. Like that's the ripple effect. Yeah. It goes beyond the group coaching container and allowing people to actually sell. Oh, I need to ask my partner. I need to actually assert myself for what I need. It's like, it's a big mm. part of the work is that self-worth journey. Are you willing to ask? Are you willing to surround yourself? Are you willing to invest in yourself and invest in relationships that are going to actually support you and your success? And I think for me, this is at the heart of connection. And I think these six layers that you have created here for the coaching container are a beautiful demonstration of the essence of what has to go beyond the conversation of our group coaching or team coaching or boardroom or, or dinner table for that matter. Absolutely. And, you know, since introducing this model back in 2021, uh, people have really grasped onto it. So I hope that you have enjoyed today's podcast episode here. You can learn more about the six layers of connection in reconnecting workspaces. Just go to Amazon, pick up a copy my invite for everyone is to really sit with this inquiry of what can I be doing to activate more of these six layers? It's the topic, you and your client, others, content, platform, and context. Mm -hmm. Well, Ivana, as always, really enjoyed our conversation today. Anything you want to say as we go to wrap up? Yeah, just like I think we all know this. Like this is nothing that's really new. But it really is that intentionality. So, you know, in terms of those six layers, like I would building off your inquiry, like, you know, where are you, where are you strong? But where can you have with some emphasis, where can you have some like impact? Whether it be in your coaching conversations and beyond. Yeah. And beyond. Yeah. So we have the ripple effect as potentials realized really stands for. And yeah. Well, as always, thank you for sitting down. Cultivate this, catalyze it, yeah. use it to amplify your conversations. We've got a lot coming up as we move into year end with vision sessions and holiday year end events. So we hope that you will join us. We hope that you're also going to share this with your colleagues mm -hmm. because the more coaches who are using these frameworks and mindsets, the stronger the impact of our work becomes. Coaching is still not well understood by everyone, and it's really critical that we are helping our clients get the results that they need in order for this profession to continue on in a growth pattern. So with that, looking forward to our next episode, and thank you, listeners. We look forward to hearing yeah. from you as well. Take care, everyone. Be well. Bye, everyone. Bye.